Tēnā koutou katoa, ko i ngā rāni me koti rāna, te whakapaparanga mai, engari e te puaki e o ki te whanganui a tāra, ko tēnei taku mihi ki nga tangata whenua o te rohe nei, ka mihi hoki o ke nga tohu o te rohe nei. Nō reira, he kaitu hono hora rauronga ki te papatonga rewa, ko Lucy Schrader toku ingoa, tēnā tātou katoa. That was me introducing myself in Te Reo Māori, the language of Tangata Whenua, the indigenous people of Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Lucy Schrader, Digital Channels Outreach Manager at Te Papa, our National Museum. Welcome to the whole glam package. Tēnā tātou katoa, no Tiamani, no Horowakia o Kutupuna, no Amerika ho, ke te whanganui a tāra ho, e noho ana i naiane, Ke te papatonga rewa aho e mahi ana. He kairauhi matai tipu, uh, taku turanga mahi. Ko Heidi Maid aho, tēnā tato katoa. And that is me introducing myself in Te Reo Māori. My name is Heidi Maid. I'm an American-born New Zealander whose ancestry comes from Germany and Slovakia. And I'm a botanist. I'm a botany curator at Te Papa. So, what is Te Papa? Te Papa is short for the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongarewa, and it is located in the capital city of New Zealand, Wellington. It is our national museum. It started out in 1865 as the Colonial Museum, moved on to the Dominion Museum, then we became the National Museum, and now we are Te Papa. Um, Te Papa holds about two and a half million uh, objects in our museum. And many of these can be found on our online collections online. And many of those are openly licensed. And we do have objects from art, history, natural history from New Zealand and Aotearoa. So we used some of that material last year when a tiny little team of us ran a project to contribute some of our stuff about New Zealand's native forget-me-nots, these lovely plants here, to Wiki. Uh, I should mention we're going to say the word project a lot. That's lowercase p, not capital P, Wikimedia projects, just that everyone should know. Um, but when we did this project, we got a few things done, like writing C-class articles in English language Wikipedia for each of these species, the information about their name, their classification, geographic distribution, conservation status, all of that linked to public research, uh, published research and online databases. We edited and created Wikidata items uh, for species and for the people who describe them, plus the collectors of specimens and the publications that we were referencing. We carefully selected and then loaded um, certain collection images to Wikimedia Commons. And this was to fully illustrate all kinds of different aspects about each of the individual species of forget-me-nots. Then we created a new uh, Wikimedia Commons template that more effectively displays all of the detailed information that we hold about each of these specimens in our database. And then we linked all these um, images and records in Wikidata um, by basically turning all that same information into structured data statements. We also tested new functionality in OpenRefine. So we not only loaded this data, but hundreds of images all at once. And we improved our own collection records by finding data that needed fixing up. And we added Wikidata identifiers for later use. And we did all this while um, collaborating with both, both local and international Wikimedians, as well as getting our own museum colleagues a little bit excited about joining in to this kind of projects. But best of all, we basically worked out a way to do this kind of project um, quickly and sustainably, which means we can do it all over again for another topic. So why is Te Papa basically doing this work? Well, Te Papa is a GLAM institution. So GLAM is galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And um, we, in today's GLAM world, basically, um, we feel that reaching audiences digitally is just as important as reaching them in person. So doing in-person exhibitions, public programs, and collections-based research is important. But we see our digital wiki work really as being museum work. And so this is in a new area that we call digital outreach. 
Now, Tapub holds amazing collections and deep knowledge about uh, all the material that we hold, but most, for most of our history, people have had to come to visit us, first physically and then online. But people all around the world could be seeing, connecting with, using our collections. So why should they need to come to us, or even really know who we are, to have those sorts of experiences? Instead, we're now finding ways to send our collections, data and knowledge out into the various digital spaces, spaces that our audience already are. Now, it means Wikimedia, of course, but we also use a whole bunch of different platforms in different ways, depending on who that audience is. So we send images of collection items out to Google Art and Culture, Unsplash, Art Store, other places that people are looking for cool pictures. We're also working on publishing our specimen data and images on GBIF, which is like the place for researchers to get large biodiversity data sets. And we're creating continuing education courses on FutureLearn that draw on our collections and our publications. And we can basically do all this digital outreach, out, outreach work because we've literally had thousands of people working for 150 years at our museum. Um, we've collected, we've cataloged, we've analyzed, we've researched, we've staged exhibitions, held events, we've reached out to our communities, we've imaged collection objects, we've structured our data, we've openly licensed our image our images. And of course, all of this is still happening today at the museum. And so with all of that in hand, we can basically send out not just images or information, but connections between these objects and their deeper context. And so with our project, that meant we wanted to create a rich package of contributions that included the three main Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects, namely Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikidata. So on our Forget Me Not project, the package was made up of 65 English Wikipedia articles, most of those brand new, about New Zealand's native Forget Me Nots, 350 images of specimens on Wikimedia Commons, that included examples of every species we were talking about, a mix of images from the field, herbarium sheets, pollen, and hundreds of Wikidata edits, adding data to support both the images and the articles, and, and letting us link our own records back out to Wikidata. And we did this with a core team of three people. It was us two and our awesome database specialist, Gash, uh, Gareth Watkins. And together we created a project structure that used each of our strengths and encouraged collaboration and learning. Now, just before we get more into the project, there is some stuff we didn't do. Um, first, we actually didn't add any Mataranga Māori or traditional indigenous knowledge from the Māori people of New Zealand. Um, and this is because Te Papa doesn't actually hold any indigenous knowledge about these particular um, species of forget-me-nots. In addition, none of our three team members were Māori. And finally, our museum as a whole is really still in the process of, of making, these, um, making and building these relationships with uh, iwi or tribes that would inform all these kinds of projects for, for in a mutually beneficial way. And I think more generally, um, we, we do need to acknowledge that there's still a lot of work to do um, in this space, in the wiki ecosystem, to make sure that it works for um, indigenous peoples everywhere in the world. Now, secondly, we didn't upload every single image or object that we could have. We focused on publishing what we reckoned was going to be useful in a wiki context. So we went deep rather than going really broad, and we used that as a way to stay focused and avoid trying to do too much. Um, as we said earlier, we are actually going to be publishing all of these specimens and images on GBIF instead, and that will still be openly licensed. And when we were done with this project, we found that Papa had actually gained quite a lot more than we had expected from just this one little bit of work. We were, of course, able to achieve our stated goal and make some of our collections, data and knowledge more generally accessible. But also, the three of us really built our skills. We learned how to use tools like Open Refine, advanced wiki functionality, stuff like templates, gadgets, plugins. And we got our heads around wiki data, realizing that the glam world's really got a chance to get somewhere with linked open data, finally. And from this project, our own museum data is actually better, because we had the chance to make all these updates to our records. Um, and, and fix some errors. Um, and, and we also now have Wikidata identifiers um, in our own museum database, and that's going to be useful moving forward in all kinds of ways, specifically for species and for people. 
Um, we've now got a big bucket of new ideas to work on. We want to match more records, more of our records with Wikidata. Um, we want to hold some community, community engagement events. Um, we're hoping to turn a few more of our staff into wiki editors. And we're figuring out, figuring out other ways to make our data more generally shareable. And of course, we now have this process that we can actually do another project on, and that it's not just going to be limited to um, natural science, natural history projects, but also humanities projects. And if you're at a GLAM, you can do this as well because we have written a manual about it. So our manual takes you through this whole process from getting your team set up all the way to publishing and promotion of your project. And it's got practical tips, it's got prompts, and it's got examples in plain English. Sorry, it's only in English at the moment, but if anyone wants to take up the mantle of translation, we'd be happy to have it in more languages. So it's specifically written for GLAMs like ours, but it will also be useful, we think, for volunteers who want to nudge their local organization in the right sort of direction. Also want to be very clear, this is a first version, and it comes from our own point of view. So right now the manual sits under Te Papa's Wiki project page, but we would really love to see this get genuinely wikified and bring in lessons and examples from other organizations. And of course, improvements from editors who have more experience to fill in a lot of the gaps that are still there. Still, we reckon that this is a process that generally works. Um, can't promise it will be easygoing necessarily, but we think that you could get a full project along these lines done in about three months, even when the team members have other work on. So we're going to share the link again at the end, um, so you can check all that out, plus it's on bookmarks that are going around. But first we want to talk about a few of the essential things that made our particular project work. So that's collaboration, staying focused, using the richness of a glam, glam collection, and keeping an eye on the bigger picture. So the first one's collaboration. Um, this style of project actually does not require a big team. As Lucy mentioned, we were three people who did this. What's important is that you're excited about Wiki, you're working together, and you stick to the decisions and the plan that you make as a team. So you want to respect and make good use of each member's expertise and skills, but you also won't get far if you're not sort of able to stay in touch and be flexible enough to help each other out once in a while. So on our project, there was absolutely no way any one of us could have done this on our own. Um, it needed the combination of knowledge and skills about the species, the technical know-how, and enthusiasm so that we could actually make progress. But on top of that, I, I really feel like working together, we were able to solve problems together, and we were able to motivate each other, which really kept the project on track. Also, in terms of collaboration, don't just keep it a secret within your team if you're doing a project like this. Tell your, um, tell your colleagues at your GLAM, because um, this can get you unexpected support from, from the museum, and it can also see the, 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 the way for future projects to happen. And then finally, collaboration can even go outside of your GLAM walls. So there are editors and specialists out there in the local community, as many of you know, that will be absolutely thrilled that your GLAM is wanting to share um, stuff, and they're going to want to help you. And so if you can um, hook into your local community and find some volunteers who are willing to help you, make sure you treasure them as well. Focus. I think it's really important to be deliberate on a project like this and stay focused. Um, the thing that I think can really help is if you keep in mind what matters to your organization and your audience. Think strategically in this way. Because then all kinds of decisions actually become a lot easier. And you do improve your chances of getting help, as we were just talking about. In our case, we got internal support to a large degree because we showed how our project fit in with Te Papa's current strategy. We've committed to supporting Papa Tuanuku, our relationships with and responsibilities for the natural world and making information about our native forget-me-nots more available, accessible, usable, is definitely a little step in that direction. Focus is also about making smart decisions about scope and sticking to them. We think it's better to complete a small project rather than run out of steam on a big one, so resist the urge to commit to doing it all at once. You can always do another project later. Um, richness, <clears throat> richness is another point. So as we said earlier, GLAMs are literally rich with all this interconnected knowledge. So you can use that. It can let you share more complete or more complex metadata. You might be able to provide a more unified story about your objects that links different topics or disciplines. 
Um, you're also surrounded at a museum by work that's already been done. So you have exhibitions, publications, research. The list of selected objects, the, the labels that were on exhibition walls, recordings of events, these can all be used in this kind of project and reshared. So for, for us, the knowledge that we had was basically um, my in-depth knowledge um, from the biodiversity research that I do on native New Zealand forget-me-nots. So we had specimens, we had images, and I've been doing field work and collections-based research for over a decade on these plants about classifying and identifying them. And so I could contribute these images and also data and also the publications that can then be cited um, on Wikipedia pages and such forth. And then, of course, there's the bigger picture. Don't forget to look up every once in a while to see the relevance of your project in that bigger view. You can use your project to actually help your wider organization and future wiki projects. You might feel like the work you're doing is just a small contained little thing, but it turns out it can have a pretty big effect on your glam. So on one hand, you can make the next project you do easier by keeping track of how it's going, talking through problems that come up, really can't stress enough, if you come up with a good solution, you write it down. And that's even more helpful if it's not actually you running the next project. It could be someone else nearby that you've inspired. Back at Te Papa, our work's inspired another curator who's already started his project about New Zealand's endemic and native spiders and harvesters. Then at the organisational level, your project's likely to find places where more work's needed. Stuff like digitizing certain collections, applying open licenses, improving data standards, finding ways to directly collaborate with your audiences. Now, if you'd linked your project to a glam strategy and audience, as I mentioned earlier, that becomes far more convincing when you argue for a rethink, uh, rethink of priorities and resourcing. Okay, so here's our main take home message. To sum up, you can share your GLAMS collections and your knowledge together by using the links between Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikidata, and you can do it in a quick, sustainable, and repeatable way. So head on over to tpapa.nz slash whole GLAM package and give it a go yourselves. Uh, as mentioned, there's bookmarks with the links, so you can grab one of those. Um, and otherwise, we would absolutely love to talk to you about your possible project, um, our project, work that you've already done in a similar area, improving the manual, absolutely. So again, you can find us here for the rest of Wikimania. You can get in touch with us through English Wikipedia and Wikidata and the various other platforms we're on. Um, and of course, you can just email us at any time. And finally, we would like to extend a massive, massive thank you to Wikimedia Aotearoa New Zealand, or WANS, who um, basically supported us to come here to Wikimania 2023 to give this talk. And of course, thank all of you for coming along. Really great to see so many faces. Nā mihi nui. And we've got a minute and a half for any little questions. Totally okay if there's not any. <laughs> okay, I think you need to use a microphone. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's Diego from Spain, a uh, big contributor in Commons. I wonder your uh, the order you followed, because you said the first thing you did is choosing images you wanted to upload. I was expecting rather that you say, the first thing we have to do is look for gaps in Wikipedia articles. So that's, can you elaborate on that? Um, so we, we, we have a bit of stuff on, on how to like build up your topic um, and, and how to identify those sorts of gaps in, um, in the manual itself. Um, there's quite a few factors that we think can go into that, and it's partly about where the gap, uh, where the gap lies, um, not necessarily on one particular platform, but in that larger picture. Um, it's also where your own expertise lies, what material you think you've got available, what's important to your organization and audience. Um, we specifically focused on New Zealand's native forget-me-nots because there weren't many other organizations out there in the world who could do that. We could do that. But even then, that's only one part of the bigger picture. 
So be happy to talk more about that later, but we seem to have hit the red, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>